Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. The most requested videos I get at the moment are always about the Karak. Talk about the Anvil Garak, let's have a look through the Anvil Karak stuff. So, we've actually seen quite a lot of it during the 2949 Citizen Con demo, but there's also been a lot more discussion and work on the ship since then. I wanted to have a look about what we've seen of the internals and externals of the ship, what we know about the ship so far, what's been discussed about it, and what we might get from some of its gameplay in the future. The Anvil Karak is planned to be released by the end of February 2020, probably in a 3.8.2 patch. It was delayed from its initial 3.8 release. The Anvil Carrick is a long-range expedition, pathfinding, and exploration ship. It's the top-tier explorer vessel currently planned for the game. It is supposed to be, at least according to its original concept, a single self-sustaining ship that can make long-duration voyages through the roughest areas of space. It's designed for transitioning jump points, dealing with extreme conditions in space, and getting back home. In lore, it was originally built as a military mapping ship. The Carrick was one of the older ships that was concepted in November 2014 after being a stretch goal for hitting $33 million. But they had to sort of, from that concept, make it larger to fit all the rooms as they wanted because with the older concepts, they didn't block out all the insides before like announcing the ship's sizes and stats. So this saw the Carrack actually grow quite a bit from its original 123 meters long by about 30 to 40% apparently. But then CIG decided to bring it back in line and closer to its original size, which now it remains at 125 meters, so two meters larger than its original concept. The reasons the devs gave for this was that they didn't want to make this sort of ship too large. It takes away from its intended goal and focus. A smaller ship's more efficient, it's um, able to travel to more places, and it's more suited to its crew size of four to six. So that sort of makes sense as long as it's got all the features and functions it needs to have. Why have it bigger? There's no point in just bulking out the size of a ship. It's easier to hit, that sort of stuff. The ship is still bigger than its original concept, but a lot of people love bigger ships, and so some people were disappointed that they didn't scale it up again. Because of this, the Carrack sort of is able to focus on large components. It doesn't have any capital ones, at least uh, on paper at the moment, unless they've changed that. But the idea here is that large components are going to be cheaper to customize, cheaper to repair, easier to maintain, that sort of stuff. You don't have to go to specific specialist facilities in the future to have those components changed out, and you should have more access to more easily change and add subcomponents to them, or at least those subcomponents will probably be cheaper. But the idea here is that you can sort of repair a lot of the Carrack on the fly while you're out in the verse. Facilities-wise, the ship has a little bit of everything, and it kind of makes for the ultimate multi-role ship for a small to medium crew. The idea is to have a truly self-sufficient ship able to explore for an extremely long period without having to come back to dock. Now, how it's going to do this is another question, because really we need to understand how fuel's going to work for the game. Is it going to be able to maintain its own fuel while it's out in the verse? Food and drink, does it need stocks of that or can it get it while it's exploring? The Carrack's cargo bay has been put in line with the rest of the cargo system as well, which sees the ship with 456 SCU of cargo split across three cargo pods, each with 152 SCU each. These are supposed to be swappable in the future with the expectation that there's some modular customization options here, that you could change each of these pods out to give different functions at the cost of... Uh, the cargo space there, maybe you'd have more crew quarters or elements where you could store different types of cargo, that sort of stuff. The cargo of the Carrack does not take into account lockers for suits, weapons, and item storage, which it appears to have an abundance of places to store these for its six crew. All of this is in addition, apparently, to having a bay for its Urza Rover and C8 Pisces Scout. It is confirmed that the Carrack comes with these vehicles. For the crew, the Carrack has room for six crew beds. Bathrooms, food and drink areas, uh, recreation areas, meeting room. The beds let you log out there at the moment. Well, when it's in game. With the addition of the player status system version 1, food and drink will be important. Later, hygiene will be important as well. It has a medical bay. We don't have an indication of how good or what tier that facility is going to be, but in the short term, it will let you set that bed there as a respawn point, but it's also going to be somewhere that you can heal all your wounds. Later, we'll be able to treat wounds based on the severity there. The idea is that you'll be able to maintain your crew without having to return to a hospital, but as I said, we don't know what tier it is yet. I would expect tier two, which is supposed to be suitable for anything except for sort of like life-threatening mega injuries. So we'll have to wait and see though. It does have a drone bay as well that houses unmanned explorer drones. There are stations in that drone bay to allow you to remote control them. We don't know when drone gameplay is coming to Star Citizen yet though, nor 
do we know to what extent these drones will be able to do things um what sort of gameplay there's associated with drones you'll be able to launch retrieve control and maintain the drones from that bay though the ship is supposed to have some form of repair facilities as well the expectation of this is an area to repair components items and that sort of jazz maybe some work tables it's possible that the drones might have the ability to repair the carrack and its parasite vehicles it also might be referring to the potential that while the vehicles are in its base that they can be rearmed repaired and refueled because we don't know exactly how that's going to work with the ship the ship has a combination of extended fuel tanks top end drives and quick mapping sort of tech uh, and sensors that allow it to travel far quickly and map along the way the bridge is separated into an upper and lower bridge and there are elevators and ladders around the ship to make traversal quick and easy the upper bridge has the mapping or hollow table and two crew stations. The lower bridge has the captain's chair and an additional two stations as well. The bridge is supposed to have a blast shield as well that can extend over the front of the ship. So that'll be interesting to see how that's going to work. There are engineering decks that give you access to various components of the ship uh, from underneath. Uh, so that you can just easily repair and maintain them, I believe. The ship also has two large manned turrets, one on each side of the rear of the ship. But we're supposed to have remote weapons controlled from the bridge stations as well. It's also been suggested that there might be a um, upper or top manned or remote turret with the weapons loadouts for the Carrick at the moment. I don't think we fully know what CIG have done with it beyond the two sort of side rear turrets. We could see a few more remote turrets, or we could see manned turrets on top and bottom, remote turrets on the top and bottom. They do have five seats for crew on the bridge, so it makes sense that they have remote weapons to access to those um, systems. Maybe you could also control the drones from there and stuff like that as well. So bear that in mind. At time of filming, the Carrick is currently available for $500 or as an upgrade as part of the Lunar Sale. I don't know how long that sale's lasting, but the ship should also be available once it goes uh, to release in February or by the end of February. Though we don't know if the price will go up when the ship's flyable or not as well, so bear that in mind. If anyone asks me whether they should buy a Carrick and they don't already own one or have spare store credit for one already, I would probably suggest it's one you get in game in the future. Spending hundreds of pounds or dollars on ships isn't something I recommend, he says with two Carracks in his own hangar. <laughs> the Carrack wasn't finished at CitizenCon, so um, there are a lot of threads about the Carrack after being seen in the CitizenCon demo, with some people concerned about the differences from its concept art and its looks in game now. One of the main sort of common comments was the differences in the engines, and people wanted larger, more orangey engines compared to the smaller, bluer ones on the rear that they currently has. So there was a lot of other feedback as well, and CIG did respond to that feedback, saying that the Carrack is still being worked on, and they're taking some of that feedback on board. Obviously, the Carrack for Citizen Con demo wasn't finished, but by the end of February, they should have had two to three extra months of, to work on the ship and get that stuff finished. What exactly will change, if anything, with the Carrack remains to be seen. The ship clearly needed a lighting and materials pass. A good compromise might be making the engines bright orange and glowy, um, but I suspect there'll be some little tweaks here and there based on the feedback that was given. What I do want to know actually about the Carrack is, will it be able to mine and refine quantum fuel as it goes in space, or does it have such massive reserves and efficiency of fuel that it doesn't really affect its long-term exploration and you'll be able to go out for a few days before needing to come back to the mainland? When will the Carrick be available to buy in-game with in-game currency um, and how much will it be? Those are the sort of stuff that I want to know. I, I want to get this sort of ship obtainable in-game for the masses in the shorter term. I really feel this is going to be one of the best ships for um, people that want to have a four to six sort of crew. Um, that sort of small to medium sized crew. It allows you to do a bit of everything in game, the Carrack. But if you want to explore and when we have exploration in the game, then this ship is going to be for you. And what sort of exploration gameplay could that be? Well, it's a whole host of features and tasks that sort of come together under the umbrella of exploration gameplay. Scanner updates is something that CIG are currently working on now, and they're incredibly important to exploration, um, detecting things like points of interest, but also interesting like wrecks and salvage and asteroids and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Points of interest are the bulk of what exploration is to me. CIG are building out more assets and scenes, but points of interest range from wrecks, asteroid clusters, uh, ships getting attacked, abandoned stations, random NPC ships, traders, anomalies... Uh, also, potentially things like uh, jump points, wormholes, alien tech, special missions. And there's a huge amount of content that could fall under that banner as well. I think for some people that it's just going to be like staying out 
in uh, uncivilized or uncharted alien space for long periods of time once we have more systems and once we can go beyond the sort of boundaries of the sort of systems that we have in game could be exploration to them but exploration missions could be loads of different things from scanning um, a particular a set of i know flowers or or anomalies out in the verse gather something and then bring it back travel and investigate an area find suitable resources or land with specific resources so that sort of surveying type gameplay there's a huge amount and it touches on science a lot as well a lot of missions could be more open as well in the future. So say you actually find something new, say you found uh, a place that would be amazing to have a base or an asteroid field or uh, data on uh, an anomaly or whatever, you might just find someone in the game to sell that to an NPC or a player, or maybe it's used for a resource for science gameplay. Saving locational data is something as well that's very important to exploration gameplay and information trading as well. The ability to save that data, trade it to another player, sell it, Set custom waypoints, all that's incredibly important. CIG have previously talked about being able to drop beacons that you can then quantum travel to, but the beacons would need to be maintained or can be used and destroyed by anyone else that finds them as well. Also, we know that CIG are putting some form of quantum fuel mining and refining in game at some point, but we sort of like need to know more about this and how it's going to work to know how long the sort of carrot can stay out in the verse. There was some leaks of a new commodity that might be coming into the game soon as well. Fontanium, I believe. But I hope that was an interesting look at the Carrick for you. We should have this ship in our hands in the not too distant future. And I will do a full tour of the ship when I'm able to, which I suspect will be whenever the planned 3.8.2 or whatever patch the Carrick's in goes to first wave PTU. I won't be able to do it during the Evocati phase unless there's some sort of change to the Evocati. But what do you think? Is the Carrick one of your favourite ships? Do you have one already? Do you think the ship will be a bit pointless without some more of its gameplay loops that is associated with it in-game? Were you disappointed by the way the ship looked at CitizenCon? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for January 2020. It's for an Anvil Arrow and Star Citizen game package. Just comment on any of my videos made this month to be in for a chance. Um, more details in the description below. Oh, it's time to shill. If you're looking for a VPN, then consider NordVPN. They have many advantages over free VPNs, but are incredibly cheap, and I use them and can recommend. There's Shadow as well, which is an alternative to owning your own gaming PC. They give you a sort of Windows 10 environment focused on gaming and it leverages the power of your instets and their cloud so that you can stream it to any device or other PC or laptop or phone or whatever. And you can now order systems with varying scales of hardware for up to 4K gaming. And as always, it works fantastically well with Star Citizen. It's an extremely affordable way to get access to a high spec PC. Links below to Shadow and Nord and make sure you use the code BoardGamer to get a discount. Thank you very much for watching and if you want to support my channel further, consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member via the join button or sharing my videos or liking and subscribing. Take care and I'll see you in the verse.